In this video, you're gonna learn the basics of how to play worship piano for beginners. You'll learn how to play worship piano parts in a way that's easy to understand. You'll learn techniques and chords you can use for any worship song. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to contribute to your church worship band. Now, I'm going to assume you have a basic knowledge of major and minor chords and are comfortable playing those with a bit of intention in at least the key of C. But if you're new to piano, or you're classically trained, or maybe you're already pretty confident behind the keyboard, the concepts in this video are gonna be really helpful for you to learn. So let's get started. I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where we create resources and tutorials like this one to help anyone succeed in the worship keys position at church. So if you're a worship piano player or a worship leader, we'd invite you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our future videos. Okay, let's get started. In modern worship music, oftentimes the most important job the keyboard player has on stage is gluing together the sound of the rest of the band and building a foundation for what's happening in a song. This is a big responsibility, but it doesn't have to be intimidating to you. With just a few concepts in your pocket, you can fill this role really well, and it doesn't have to be complicated or require you to have years of experience. Let's break this down to three simple tips to help you get started. Tip one for better and easier worship chords is practice smooth and subtle chord changes. Let's start off with a simple progression in the key of C that you might run into in any typical worship song. So just four chords, C, F, A minor, G, and then back to C. And I'm playing all of these chords in what's called root position. So you have the root note, the third, and the fifth above. C, F, A minor, G, C. Now I'm gonna play this progression two more times. Here it is in first inversion. Now one more time in second inversion. So in root position, I'm playing the one of each chord as the lowest note in the right hand. In first inversion, I'm playing the middle note, the third. And in second inversion, I'm playing the fifth as the lowest note in the chord. So root position, first inversion, second inversion. I'm gonna assume that you're able to hang with most of that. What I want to highlight here is that if I only play this progression in root position, these changes are pretty abrupt. Now watch what happens when we choose an inversion for each chord that's designed to make each change as small and subtle as possible. We're gonna start off with C first inversion. So it's a subtle change. I'm playing in the right hand C first inversion, F in root position, A minor, second inversion, G, second inversion, and then back home to C, first inversion. And see how different that sounds compared to this. And once you're comfortable with this concept, you can apply it to any key. Here's the same idea and the same chord progression, this time played in the key of G. We can compare that to all root position. So in order to make the changes between your chords more subtle and smooth, you're going to leverage not just root position chords, but first and second inversion chords as well. So you're not always gonna play the one, the three, and the five in your right hand in that order. Sometimes you might play the one, three, and five, and then for the next chord, it could be the three, the five, and then the high octave on top. That would be first position. Or you might take it even higher, turn that on its head and play the fifth, then the high one, and the three above that. The idea is to minimize movement between the shared notes in your chords. That makes these changes a lot more subtle. And getting comfortable moving from root to first and second position chords is a skill that does take some time, so you just have to practice. 
pull up any chord chart for a popular worship song and try playing the chorus, challenging yourself to move as few fingers as possible for each chord change. I want to overtly spell out why this skill is so helpful in modern worship music. It's not always a bad idea to have your chord changes be drastically noticeable. Sometimes that can be used to great dramatic effect. But when your role is focused on gluing together the sound of your band, oftentimes making those movements subtle and simple is the best way to ensure that you're sitting underneath the rest of the band in the mix. So getting comfortable moving from root to first to second inversion to minimize the number of steps you're moving any one chord change is a really vital skill. Tip two for better and easier worship chords is to learn how to play sus chords. Let's go back to the key of C and play that same progression from before with the smooth chord inversions. Now, I'm gonna insert a couple sus chords by just moving one note per chord and listen to the difference this can make. And then after you've heard it, I'll explain a little bit more about what's going on with each of these chord shapes. So it's pretty much the same progression, but inserting a couple sus chords totally changes the feel. Starting off in the exact same way with C first position. Then we're playing an F sus two chord. And this is root position, but instead of playing the third, A, I'm gonna play the two, which is G. So right there, that change is great because instead of changing two notes, I'm only moving from this E here to that F. So we talked about smoothing out these transitions and sus chords can make that even easier for you to do. So to F sus two, then we're in A minor, second position. And then lastly, we're playing a G sus four, but we're playing this in second position. So D, G, and then instead of B, I'm gonna sus that up to the four, which is a C. And this leaves that trailing high C note to resolve right there with the C again in first position. Now, each of these changes leaves some open space and a sense of tension that you can then resolve at the right time, perhaps when the melody line of the song also resolves. You don't need to always play sus chords, and if you did, then your progressions would probably always sound a little bit incomplete, but being able to slip these in at the right time is a great tool to have in your toolkit. To practice this, I recommend picking a key to practice in, then one chord at a time. Switch between the major chord, sus two, major chord, sus four, and then back to the major chord. So let's do that right here with a C chord in root position. C, C sus two, major chord again, sus four, and then back to the major chord. Then do it again, but this time in first inversion. And then, you guessed it, we're gonna to go to second inversion and do the exact same thing. Doing this sort of drill is really just about building up muscle memory in the key that you've chosen to practice in. Do this over and over at speed until you're comfortable moving between them easily, and then practice the other chords that are also in that key. So here's F, G, A minor, and then we worked our way back up to C. There's really no way to get good at this other than putting the time in to practice build up that muscle memory, and get comfortable in the keys that you know you're going to be playing in most often. The good news is once you've built up that muscle memory and that head knowledge in one or two keys, it gets easier and easier to transpose to other keys on the keyboard. Now here's tip three for better and easier worship chords. Use right hand octaves to hint at and enhance melodies and chord changes. As you get more comfortable using inversions and sus chords to make your chord changes smooth, and take on this role of gluing the band together, you'll start to identify opportunities for you to further enhance what your band is doing by hinting at melody ideas or motifs in the right hand, especially in between the chord changes. So let's go back to that same progression in C. We're 
we're also leaving those sus chords we talked about just a minute ago in this progression. Now, listen to how a few simple octave notes in the right hand in between those chord changes can add a ton to this progression. Okay, so all the chord changes themselves are unchanged, but in between I'm playing single note octaves in my right hand in a couple of different ways. So let's start off breaking this down one chord at a time. Here's C again in first inversion. And then in between this chord and the next, which is our F sus2, I'm gonna play two notes in the right hand. I'm gonna play octaves. Those notes are G and then E. So a little bit faster, that's C, G, E. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm dancing around that next chord, which is the F sus2 chord. So I'm going above it and then below it, and then we land on that next chord. So we're hinting at that next chord, which resolves really nicely when we play that F sus2. Then I'm gonna play two more notes, and you're gonna notice this theme. I'm playing two notes in between each chord change. Here I'm playing F and E in the right hand. So let's play all of this together so far. Now the reason I chose those two notes is that F lines up with the chord that's currently being sustained, and then the E hints at the next chord, which is that A minor. So when we land there, it feels like another sort of destination that that little melodic line was hinting towards. Then we're repeating that F E because it steps away from that A minor and then right back to it. So even just in that little melodic moment, we've got a small bit of tension and then a nice resolution right back to that A minor chord. So let me play up to this third A minor. Now we've landed on the fourth chord, which is our G sus four. And this is where the melodic idea really hits home for me because we're purposely suspending that B up to C in the G chord. And that feels a little odd with that G bass note in there. But then we play in the right hand, B, G. And that B is especially important because it actually belongs in the G chord. It's not the G sus, it's a true G chord would have that B, and we put it on top of any other melodic note we're doing. So it really stands out. So here's that sus, and then B, G, and then that G hints towards home base, which is right back to C first inversion. So one more time, let me play this whole progression for you and see if you can hear the tension and resolution that these little melodic moments bring to this very straightforward chord progression. Now, I have a bonus tip to go along with this third one on melodic patterns in the right hand. In modern worship music, it's not just about the chords and the notes you play that determine how you fill space and glue together your band. It's also important that you choose the right keyboard sounds to go along with the chords and the melodic notes that you choose to play. For this bonus tip, I want you to hear that exact same octave part again, but this time, I'm going to layer in a type of synthesizer sound called a pad, along with the grand piano that I've been playing throughout this tutorial. Listen to the difference the addition of this pad sound makes to the exact same progression. So here you're gonna be hearing the piano sound and a pad sound layered together. Now this pad sound not only adds a sense of energy and movement to that basic piano part, 
but it also fills in all that space between the chord changes in a way that the piano sound alone just isn't able to. Pretty much all modern worship music includes pad sounds, so it's an essential part of any worship piano player's growth path to understand what pads are and how to use them alongside pianos and other sounds. For now, in this bonus tip, just wrap your head around the idea that the sounds you choose to use can be just as important as the chords and parts you play with those sounds for a lot of modern worship songs. Learning more about how to pick the right sounds and especially how to get started layering pad sounds into your worship piano playing is the next logical step from here. But for now, go ahead and practice the three tips for better and easier chords from this video. And then in a future follow-up, we'll start explaining how you can bring pad sounds into your piano playing for church. If that's a video you'd like to see, go ahead and subscribe to the channel now. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with another worship piano player or worship leader you think would enjoy it. Leave a comment letting us know what you learned from these tips and give the video a thumbs up. That's a great way to help us out and reach more people. Thanks for watching and have fun playing worship piano.